Hi there! Welcome to the Gardens and Graveyard channel. My name is Charisma and today we're meeting in the garden and we're going to do a home garden tour for November 2023 in a growing zone 9A on the Oregon coast. And I will have to say that it has been raining hard for days and we just got a little break in the weather for a few hours and then it's going to start raining like crazy again. So this may be my last chance to get out here and do a tour for quite some time. Um, I desperately need to come out and cut back all my dahlias and a few other perennials that need to be cut down. <clears throat> But that's just going to have to wait until I have, you know, time at home <laughs> during some dry weather. So the sun is going down. It's getting quite chilly. I'm not going to be standing out here pruning wet plants for the evening. <laughs> that does not sound like a fun job to me. But I do want to take a walk around and show you what kind of fall color we have and how the garden has definitely gone to sleep. Across the driveway, we have some birch trees in full color, so that's really fun. And then swinging around, we always start here at the driveway, um, which is right here, come through. And um, we'll just take a walk. All right, so we've got um, a lot of fall color on this shrub that fell over. <laughs> I recently bought these shrubs. These these are um, coral berries. This is the proud berry from Proven Winners. And it is loaded with berries. And then I bought a, just a, a species coral berry. And it has a red berry. It is not as showy as the Proven Winners. And I thought it would be interesting to see the difference. I'm seeing a lot more fall color on the species and a lot more berry on the Proven Winners. So I think that's interesting. Those need to get in the ground here soon, but not tonight. All right, so Privet Grove, all the hostas have been cut back. Um, coming through here, we need to cut back our asters. The um, Kaffir daisies, or Kaffir daisies, Kaffir lilies have all kind of finished. You can see them all flattened out there. They will bloom sporadically. They look like this. Uh, throughout the winter, but you could see their foliage is done. The day lilies got cut back, and this is all fresh foliage. So we've got a clump here, here, here. There's one over here somewhere, but I'm not seeing any foliage yet. Uh, we did cut back our hydrangea, which you should have seen in a video at this point. And coming over here to the rose garden, not a whole lot going on. This is a burning bush, and it is never colored up the way my dad's burning bush does. I think it doesn't get enough sun in the summertime. You could see the tips. Like, my dad's is the entire thing is like this, and it is twice as large. So it is just like this intense... Uh, shrub this time of year and I wanted that so I think um, come spring I might find a new place for that burning bush and that'll give me another space for another rose in the rose garden um all right moving forward the Edgeworthia has lots of flowers coming on she has not dropped very many of her leaves, but they are starting to drop, you could see. And then we come to the Dahlia patch, and yeah, they are super done. And let me look at this thing. Yikes! Definitely time to cut those back. 
We'll get to it. They're not in any danger or anything. It just doesn't look beautiful. Finally, my weeping cherry tree it has some beautiful fall color on it. It's not, I, I would say maybe it's like 40% fall color. It hasn't totally turned yet. Um, over this direction. I don't know if anything... Oh, the Rose of Sharon does turn a little yellow. Right there. And the Barberry also gets some fall oranges and reds on it, which is pretty fun. And um, moving this direction, we do have... Winter hazels, you can see this bright yellow patch here and one back there. They will get maybe three times that size at maturity. So that's going to be a really fun fall foliage eventually, but I'm really happy to see, to be able to see them really well even this year. The staghorns have almost lost all of their leaves at this point, but what's left is still just a uh, magnificent fall color. Um, all right, I'll move on down this way. Uh, you can see the other winter berry, winter, winter hazel, goodness. And that barberry really doesn't have fall color on it yet. The Rose of Sharon has turned a little bit yellow, but not as yellow as it can get. This is a deciduous rhododendron, and you can see it has turned its fall color. And our pineapple sage finally came into bloom. It is the first week of November, you guys. Or the first full week. And it is just now opening up. But I will still see our winter resident hummingbirds come visit this shrub and it will bloom at least till after thanksgiving weekend um i can't remember it blooming much past the end of november though we shall see right down here um you know I don't plant uh, down here for fall interest that much because it is so wet and um, kind of uncomfortable to be in. So I'm not down here very much in the fall and winter, but our trees will get fall interest. So we've got this pink flowering dogwood has some fall color on it. We have a weeping birch that has great fall color on it and we do have a berry poppins that gets a little bit of fall color and the variegated dogwood has a little bit of fall color unfortunately my oak leaf hydrangeas are not getting fall color and I think that's because they're just in too much shade so we may have to reconsider where she lives um in the coming year but I'm kind of excited about this deer villa which has really fun beautiful fall color and we just planted that like a month ago Still have not taken care of this genera. You can see it is definitely time to do so. It doesn't get fall color, it just dies. <laughs> so I need to do something about that. Um, just checking on our little nine bark that we just planted. It's looking pretty good. which is exciting. And the peanut butter bush does get 
just sort of like an iridescent chartreuse color. The um, Sun King does turn a more like burnt orange before it uh, it dies back. So this um, perennial uh, gets cut all the way down to the ground, um, like right now. <laughs> Just need to do it. Let's take a look at these roses. This one not so happy. This one loving its life still, still doing so good. It is come up and started pushing growth that direction. So I think that I might get another one of these to place on this side and possibly even this side. I would just love to see this gazebo completely covered in roses. All right, so then we have the pentacle hydrangeas, which do get a little bit of fall color. You can see the yellow leaves in here and it's holding its flower a little bit. Um, these we do not cut back, so we're just letting them grow. Not sure what else really gets fall color. This is the um, Himalayan honeysuckle, and it is just wild. But we have spireas in there that do get fall color. It's just not as easy to see in this light. Definitely getting darker. We have a couple of wild birches or aspens, rather wild aspens, dotted here and there. So you will see some bright yellows in the kind of foresty areas. This is the kind of lighting that I always see bears. And I know that bears come up through this direction. So I'm just gonna make my way back into the security of my fenced backyard <laughs> quickly. Before I get all the way over there, I will just say you could see all the leaf litter down there and that is from this birch tree up there, which has really fantastic bright yellow color in the fall. And the Wajilia does a pretty good um, yellow color, uh, but it doesn't show off as much as the birch. So it looks very muted right next to it. Outside of the fall color, and the white bark in the winter time, the way that tree is growing, you can see all of its branches are over here, but the tree itself is way back there, like way back there. And it's like a big branch that kind of half fell and then reached to the sun. And I'm just so over it. So I think that's gonna be one of the big projects next year. One of the big projects next year will be to remove that tree. All right, so then coming through here, everything is empty. Uh, we do have a camellia back there that doesn't, doesn't grow very good. Um, but check out this shamrock. How beautiful is that? That plant right there. It always comes up with one leaf or one stem for leaf clover with a purple center every single year right there. That's it. So that's our beautiful lucky shamrock volunteer. Um... All right, I think that's kind of it as far as uh, the backyard goes. We do have our maple, which is making a lovely fall mess, as you can see. Uh, but it is in full fall color. Hoping I haven't lost too much light to show you all. Uh, you 
at that. <laughs> it's like the same color as my house. It's so vibrantly red. Really fun. And then Spencer's little garden is still going. Look at this yellow flower. It's just, it can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> uh, and then we do still have some purple snapdragons. These are snapdragons that I grew from seed, which is kind of fun. Uh, we have some volunteer nasturtiums that are still going for it. And then we just planted some seeds in our raised bed, some winter crops. I think that's really kind of it. The moon garden hasn't changed. The butterfly garden. I think we cut this down before the last tour. I can't remember. Um, it's definitely cleaned up. You know, we have some oregano here and we have some sedums there. I could show you, this is why we don't leave seed heads up. You can see how it's starting to kind of mold. Yeah, they just, they never get dry. They just, they're just, um, they just absorb the moisture like a sponge. We do have a few um, impatience still holding on to some color in here. And everything in here is just kind of green. <laughs> Not, not a whole lot to see. So I do love this time of year when we have, we have a birch, we have aspens in here, our maple, and then the birch back there. So fun to have all the fall color. Just love it. All right, that is gonna do it for today's home garden tour. It is getting quite cold. It's hard to even close my hands right now. Um, and by quite cold in my climate, it's probably like 50. <laughs> I doubt that it's even below 50 at this point. Um, and there's no wind, which is really helpful. When it's windy, man, you can feel that bite. Uh, but that is... That's going to be it for the November garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're celebrating your life and we will see you in the next video. Bye.